Startups, an integral part of the economy that stimulates innovation across the globe. Led by ambitious entrepreneurs, they have an immense impact when it comes to creating jobs and new products that could potentially disrupt the economy. Hey everyone, this is Mert Damlopinar and I'm going to talk about common questions before you launch your first startup. Although startups aren't given the attention, they deserve when it comes to the role they play in a global economy. This is partly because of their potential to change the world as eclipsed by their high risk of failure. If startups can persist and overcome all the obstacles they go through, then their success is exponential. Don't let the fear of losing be greater than the excitement of winning. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel or follow me. I will be uploading three videos a week which you don't want to miss if you don't want to repeat common mistakes which hold a business back and want to learn the perfect path to success. The process of making your first startup is no easy task, however, entrepreneurs have a huge responsibility to shoulder. Studies indicate that at least two-thirds of businesses with employees tend to fail within the first two years of their conception. Therefore, as an entrepreneur, even with your strong drive, it's best to cover all grounds before building the next big thing. Considering that, we prepared some of the frequently asked questions that most budding entrepreneurs have about startups. For starters, pick something you're passionate about, something you're experienced with. Doing business out of that passion will depend on many factors though. Ideally, your idea shouldn't require an extensive capital to fund and should be able to grow into something big within a reasonable time frame. You can file for patents, trademarks, and copyrights. If you have something propriety about your company, you should consider filing for a patent to temporarily protect your business in its infancy to get it up and running. There isn't a single type that works for all businesses here. You need to look up and understand all the various structures available and choose accordingly. LLCs are popular, but they can get complicated very quickly. S corporations are a good start in general as it becomes easier to transition into a C corporation. Investors tend to prefer C corporation structures as well, something to keep in mind when you're trying to raise capital. Partnerships and sole proprietorships aren't ideal due to the potential liability that can fall onto the owner. Find an experienced lawyer you can trust to help you form a legal entity and file with whatever state you plan on operating from. Timing is based on what you're offering as a business. Conducting market research is integral to figuring out when the right time is to start your company. Will your business be entering an already existing market? What's the state of the market currently? Is it moving slow or fast? Infrastructure readiness, government regulations, social norms, already established businesses and platforms are all important in finding out when the right time is to start your business. Finding a co-founder to start a business with is quite hard. Many founders are people who have been friends for a while or have grown up together in school or college. Look for common interest groups and meetups to find a potential founder. Friends can help with introducing you to someone who can be the right fit as well. There isn't any specific place where you can find one. The most important criteria for finding one, however, is someone you can trust. Another question that can only be answered on a case-by-case basis. However, the only way you shouldn't split equity is to go right down the middle. Studies suggest that 50-50 splits can lead to lack of motivation and control. So how do you divide equity? It's a conclusion you and your co-founders will have to come to after having an honest and open discussion about it. Make sure you do it early on and put it in writing too. Startup tools and resources like an equity split calculator can help with this as well. It's generally advisable to maintain any and all related financial documents about your company. A more comprehensive list of the records you should keep would include financial statements like a PL statement, a balance sheet, and cash flow statements. Employee records, board and stockholder minutes, and consent. A stock and options ledger, tax filings and records for federal, state and local income, sales and property records, Secretary of State's filings that include your certificate of incorporation, annual filings and so forth, invoices and contracts, bank account papers, creditor records. This decision is mostly a personal one. It includes you assessing the risk and your appetite for it, your confidence in the business, and your willingness to choose three through to the end. It's important to factor in your family and the effects of possible worst case scenarios as well. Highly unlikely, your chances will only improve once you've gained traction with a product and have the proper management to keep it going. 
Only after you've got this going for you should venture capital financing be considered. You might have to start out getting financing from family, friends, or possibly angel investors. A big no-no for most investors or individuals in general is when they're asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. A side effect of having them sign NDAs is that it makes them consciously aware of the length of your contract. It alone reduces the worth of signing an NDA compared to having your idea talked about. Moreover, people aren't generally out to steal ideas. They have their own lives and commitments that they would likely not drop to take your idea. Even if they did, you would have been quite a few steps ahead of them by then. This depends. Ideally, you want to raise capital for the sole purpose of taking your organization to the next level in size and infrastructure. Less ideal scenarios would include raising money to hire a salesperson or to pay the founders. Try keeping your expenses low and avoid raising money for as long as possible. Once you're down to 12 to 18 months of run well, you want to be looking for capital. When it's time to start talking to investors early on, it takes a while, longer than entrepreneurs expect to raise capital. Enough to get by. Startup resources are precious and limited. You need to maximize the value out of them as much as possible, and that means taking a pay cut as well. If you're paying yourself enough to survive and work on the business without being distracted by other responsibilities and commitments, investors won't really mind at all. After all, they recognize that the commitment is ultimately what matters when it comes to having your business succeed. It's all about balance. Don't make the valuation so low it compromises yourself at the cost of giving too much to the company. Successive lower valuations can also negatively affect the chances for late investors to join in as well. Unreasonably high valuations, on the other hand, will be outright denied for the most part. If investors naively invest anyway and the next round may be a down round, during which investors may get unhappy about. Depending on the nature of your business, you may need the following permits, license, and registration. The permits are required for regulated firms like aviation, alcohol, etc. Sales tax license or permit, home-based business permits, city and county business permits or licenses, zoning permits, a seller's permit, health department permits for restaurants and such. And lastly, federal and state tax IDs or employer IDs. Check your sales, check if your customers are happy with what you're offering. Talk to your customers and engage with them. Traction and validation work together. As long as your concept is validated and your traction is gaining, your organization will keep moving forward. For starters, set up a good form of employment, possibly with an at-will clause for the employee to sign. The clause will allow you to immediately terminate an employee if it's not working out. When hiring, perform reference checks, look for relevant experience, and assess how they'll fit in within your company culture. Investors try to quantitatively assess the value of your business opportunity by questioning two main factors. The first is the potential market size and whether it's significant enough. The second is the entrepreneur's valuation and whether it's reasonable. This depends on your business. You may need some insurance, but not all types of coverage depending on the kind, size, and structure of your organization. When looking out for insurance in general, consider the following. General liability insurance, health insurance for employees, product liability insurance, property insurance, professional liability insurance, human life insurance, workers' compensation insurance, directors' and officers' insurance, business interruption insurance. Finding out the costs and expenses you may incur is crucial before you start your business. There are many resources, both online and offline, that can provide worksheets and guidelines to help determine costs for your business. Every item on your proposed budget sheet should be carefully researched. Utility companies, trade associations, and networking with other entrepreneurs in the same field can help with giving you closely estimated costs. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to Analytics of Life, and don't forget to press the bell icon. Never miss another update or a new video.